Fox 13 News is following the latest in the case of Chad and Lori Daybell, who now face first-degree murder charges in the deaths of her children. Chad is also charged with first-degree murder in connection to his first wife, Tammy's death. Now, those charges both of the Daybells face tonight are related to the deaths of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Lori also faces one count of grand theft, and along with the murder charge connected to Tammy Daybell, Chad also faces two counts of insurance insurance fraud. These new charges come before both Daybell and Vallow make court appearances tomorrow. Fox 13 News has team coverage tonight digging into what these charges have revealed about the investigations. We start with Lauren Steinbrecher here in studio. Lauren. Yeah, a retired FBI agent tells me this is a case where you really don't have a traditional smoking gun. So the prosecution is relying on tying together bits and pieces. And while tonight we do have some answers now, there are a few huge questions that the indictments don't address. In nine pages, nine charges. Conspiracy to commit murder, first degree murder, grand theft, insurance fraud. And this is what they call it in a sense, the totality of circumstances where everything adds up. Adding up an argument for calculated premeditation. Yeah, Retired I mean, FBI I mean, Special I mean, Agent I mean, Frank Montoya Jr. says that Lori and Chad Daybell and Lori's brother Alex Cox plotted these murders. For example, prosecutors accused Chad and Lori of using their religious beliefs as justification for the three homicides. And I think that that may be the prosecution's anticipation of a possible insanity defense in the, you know in regard to the fact that they're using religion as a crux you know as that justification well don't be fooled by that other examples Lori allegedly collecting both JJ and Tylee's social security benefits for months after they died Chad allegedly upping Tammy's life insurance plus suspicious Google searches text messages etc they've had to really put together a lot of pieces of the puzzle. What we don't see in the puzzle yet, how exactly everyone was killed. Montoya says there could be a reason for leaving that crucial part out of the indictment right now. Where you lay out enough to um, publicly announce that you have enough information to bring these charges. That's exactly what the Fremont and Madison County prosecutors Despite did Tuesday. Delays, we have been working diligently to pursue justice for the victims in this case, to ensure we have the evidence required to prove the facts beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. Now, the penalties for the most serious charges range from life in prison without parole to the death penalty. The state will not say yet what it'll pursue. We're going to go now to Adam Herbetz looking deeper at Tammy Daybell's death. Well, Lauren, these are all of the documents that have been filed today as Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow look at the possibility of life in prison or the death penalty. This right here is the indictment, which details why the state believes they have enough evidence. But of course, the biggest question still unanswered is how Tammy Daybell died. It took more than a year to complete her autopsy after investigators exhumed her body from Springville, Utah. The details of that autopsy have not been released publicly, and the documents do not go into detail. But here's what we do know. According to the indictment, Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow texted each other about Tammy being possessed by a spirit named Viola. They used their religious beliefs to justify the killing of Tammy Daybell. And investigators believe Alex Cox, Lori's brother, tried and failed to kill her before that fateful night when she went to sleep and never woke up. That's a theory other family members have been wary of for more than a year. Tammy Daybell, 10 days before she died, somebody came at her with a paintball gun, and Larry, Larry that said, wasn't that a, wasn't a prank, paintball. that wasn't a paintball gun. He said, Tammy obviously didn't know what she was looking at. It misfired, otherwise she'd probably been dead that day. Investigators now say Alex Cox attempted to shoot Tammy on October 9th, 2020, performed internet searches on how to shoot through a Dodge Dakota, and went to the gun range to practice months before. Experts we spoke to say this case is a perfect example of one that would be ripe for a plea deal, but anything could happen. If these people just stick to their guns, then it'll absolutely go to trial. And it may be, uh, in some twisted way, an opportunity for them to promote whatever religious ideology that they are promoting. Who knows? He also said he expects the next step will be that the attorneys for Chad and Lori 
will try to argue. Their clients are not mentally competent to stand trial. They are both due in court tomorrow, and of course, we will cover that live right here on Fox 13. Reporting in the newsroom, Adam Herbetz. Bob, Kelly, we'll throw it back to you. As Adam just mentioned, we will cover the court appearances of both Vallow and Daybell tomorrow and bring you the very latest. We have been following this investigation from the very beginning. You can read much more on our website, fox13now.com.